Hey good people, hola mi gente, Ms. Malcolm Hughes here, welcome, welcome back. Today we're going to do a book review. We are reviewing The Prada Plan by Ashley Antoinette. We will go over the general overview of the book, what I liked about it, what I disliked about it, and whether or not I think you should read it. So The Prada Plan is actually one of Ashley Antoinette's earlier series. It follows the life of Yaya. Yaya is a young girl who it turns out is raised by initially her parents. Her dad is not technically her dad, he's a pimp, but her mother is his bottom B, his top woman. And for all intents and purposes, her father is not her father, but he takes her on as his own because he loves her mother so much. So throughout the story we follow Yaya after the murder of her parents. This happens very early on. Well the murder of her mother and the incarceration of her father. We'll give too many details there. But after that Yaya has a very turbulent, traumatic, horrible, event filled life in order to try to attain what she calls her Prada plan. Her Prada plan is something that her mother left her with. It's really an ideology of you have to use what you got to get what you want so that you can have a life of luxury. That's really what it means and Yaya really takes this on and internalizes it because it's one of the last pieces she has of her mother. So, like I said, Yaya goes, she doesn't just jump from group home to group home. She is in one foster home, which is horrible. Just think trauma, think the scariest things that you think happen in the children and it's happening there. But with that, she has a young girl who's there with her, Mona, who is suffering through all of these atrocities right alongside her and they create a bond. Eventually when things become so horrific and the woman threatens to send them back to foster care in order to protect her son, they decide that it's time for them to break out where well, Yaya does and she's like, Mona, you're coming too. <laughs> they decide it's time to break out, try things on their own, they enact their revenge and they go for it. Eventually, they are working as bartenders at this bar. They are doing okay for themselves, much better than they were or would have been, right? And then they and meet up with this guy who's part of elite management. Elite, everyone kind of from the outside looking in just thinks of it as kind of a like hood modeling agency. Once you get with elite, he's known to be with the flossiest, the flyest, and they all seem to be getting money. So eventually it turns out that elite management is actually an escort center, essentially, right? He has all these finest, flyest women for the most elite men, right? This is the top clientele. Eventually that doesn't pan out. Yaya meets up with a girl named Leah. Leah and Yaya decide to go off and do their own thing. Mona decides to stay. This catapults into the next part of the book, right? We have to deal with Everyone has to deal with their choices, right? Yaya and Leah are all getting mon money. Mona, on the other hand, it doesn't work out so well for her. But Mona is Yaya's sister, so there's that sisterhood there that eventually they are able to reconcile. Leah and Yaya are a trickier situation because Leah ends up falling in love with Yaya, which you can kind of see from the jump, but we'll get to that later. And... Yaya actually falls in love with a guy named Indy. Indy is someone she actually met through Mona. So that is like the third section of the book of Yaya and Indy trying to have their love, Leah trying to disrupt it, right? By any means necessary because Yaya played in her face. <laughs> And she would say it, okay? She gave her all of her love and she played in her face. She shunned her. And so that carries us through the third section of that book, right? And that eventually leads us to the end of the book where it seems as if things are going to be okay. But if you are accustomed to reading the world of Ashley Antoinette, you know that they are not, right? That's the general overview of the book. I will say that I did enjoy reading the story. Things I liked about it, I think that Ashley Antoinette does a really good job of 
interweaving aspects of a story, having something here and then you may forget about it and then it comes back up later and it's full circle and you're like, what? So that surprise aspect, surprise element, she is able to have that. I think she writes characters really well. She does dialogue really well. You never question the authenticity or authenticity of the voices speaking. I think she has that down. I think that she is able, again, to carry a story, right? She carries stories so well that they end up becoming full-on series. So she takes what could have been a book, a one-off story, and she creates this character and she world builds in such a way that people are invested in wanting to know more about them, which really allows her the opportunity to take her time with these characters, really flesh them out, and you get to know aspects of their backgrounds that you may not get in a one-off book, right? You get to flesh that out in a series. You get to learn more about these characters in a series and really become more invested. So I think she does that really well. Obviously, that's her career. She's done that really well. And so the things that I've always said about Ashley Internet range through here, the aspects that I like. However, the things that I dislike are also more prevalent here because now I've read this may be the 13th book I've read by her. So I've read a good number of her books. So I'm really starting to pick up on her style. And this was one of her earlier works. So I have been able to see her develop in her craftsmanship and her skill and her pen over time, especially reading the Ethic series and then the Ethic um, one-off books and then uh, the Butterfly series. So I've I, I probably read more than 13 of her books now that I'm... Uh, Racking it up, the Butterfly series and uh, Mock to a Flame, the one that ignited that entire series. So I was able to see where she's matured in her skill, but this is some of her earlier works. And by reading this, it actually allowed me to see more of the frustrations that I have sometimes in her later works. And I'm going to talk about those now. So, one thing is, I feel like sometimes she recycles storylines. And that can sometimes be frustrating because it feels redundant for me as a reader. For instance, there's usually a woman who ends up pregnant and doesn't tell her mate. That happens in Ethic, that happens in the Butterfly series, that happens here in the Prada plan. And sometimes that can be frustrating because it feels repetitive. You're like, okay, I know they're having unprotected sex, so they're going to get pregnant. They're having a tumultuous relationships so right now at minimum, so... The woman's going to hold that to her chest and she has her reasons for it. It's just, eh, give me something different. Sometimes there are moments where you're like, why does that matter? For instance, when Leah and Indy have sex, read the book to figure out how that transpires. When Leah and Indy have sex, the first time they have sex, Indy does drop up. He wears a condom. Leah puts it on him. You can anticipate that she's probably going to put a hole in it, right? But before he comes, she takes the condom off and gives him head. So afterwards, though, the internal thought is that she's trying to get pregnant because she bit a hole into the condom. It's like, yeah, but she took the condom off to give him head, so why does that matter? Obviously, obviously it shows Leah's manipulativeness and her sneakiness, and that'll come back up later. But in that moment, it's like, it feels disconnected almost. Sometimes it feels as if like you wrote a scene and then you went back and you added more to that scene and it didn't really matter that certain events had transpired because the scene had changed. Also, without telling too much here, there's a tattoo situation and it's like, okay, she has this tattoo. Tattoos are permanent. Does it not come back up later? These people have slept together multiple times. Like you didn't announce the covering up of the tattoo or the removal of the tattoo or if the tattoo was fake. Like something needs to have been there. And sometimes solutions seem too simple, but then other times, right? It seems as if things are avoidable. Like for instance, the situation between Leah, Indy and Yaya. I find it very challenging to believe that individuals are discussing their enemies or who they're sleeping with or whatever without names ever coming up. I just do. Right? You're going to say it at one point. A person is going to be inquisitive and curious at one point. So that needs to be there and it doesn't happen. So it feels inauthentic and forced to a degree. And you use it. Readers have to have to use like readers have to suspend belief. Or readers have to suspend disbelief at some point. Or readers have to suspend belief at some point in order to overlook certain flaws. And sometimes as a reader, 
it can be a little frustrating. Now, a bigger question, my friends and I who read these books are like, who hurt Ashley Antoinette? Right? Like, gosh, why do these characters have to go through so much pain and suffering all the time? It's really a lot. So that can be overwhelming. It's like they can't get no peace. Can't nobody get no joy for extended periods of time. And it's like, dang, it feels like so much. Obviously, you need drama and things to propel the story for it. But sometimes you're just like, hey, I as a reader need a break. And these characters need a break. Those are my frustrations. Now, with all of that being said, I did really enjoy the story again. Do I think that you should read it now, read it when you have time, or read it if you want, based on my scale? I would say that you should read this story when you have time. I think it's good, I think it's enjoyable, I think that it can be a lot. Um, and I do prefer the Ethics series more, so I would tell someone to read that first. That's it for me. I'm Ms. Malcolm Hughes, one who believes that books are sometimes better than people. And so the next time, please remember to give time time, to be kind to each other, and to have the best day of your life on purpose. Peace, adiós, adios, ciao.